From the Green Room Studios at Bates Nursery in Nashville, Tennessee, it's Gardening Inside Out, a podcast with highlights from our Saturday morning live show, answering all your gardening questions, giving you plant advice for any space in your life. Let's start the show. Hey, Carolyn Gamp. Hey, Austin Lowen. It's Tyler Blankenship. What's up? What is up? The sun. The sun is up. The sun is hot. It's hot today. It is. Mid 80s. Mm hmm. Dang. 25 less than 90. Oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for these humid Tennessee summers. It doesn't feel humid yet, though. No, it's not, but it's coming. The bugs are coming. Mm hmm. All of it. It kind of did yesterday. Mm hmm. I was outside all day. It was was pretty toasty out. Mm hmm. Weed eated. I was looking at my greenhouse and the fan wasn't cutting off and I was like, oh, it's above 85 in there. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely yesterday. I was mowing that tall grass yesterday. Yeah, were you? Uh-huh. So, it looks great. (laughs) Are your lines all straight? Very. Austin loves to mow. (laughs) Every Monday. Oh, I have to do it every Monday. I don't love it. I love when it's done. I will say that. It does look good. Looking out over the lawn, it's freshly cut that you just did yourself. It takes like two and a half hours to finish. Yeah, when I'm done, I'm happy. Beauty, do you ever run over your own plants? No, never? I would never. You've never done it? You know a fun game I do play, though? What? If my kids leave it in the yard, I run it over and <laughs> shred it. <laughs> Unless it's like a good pair of shoes or something. But I'm just like, I'm almost like seeking it out. I'm like, oh, they left that out in the yard, too? Oh, shred. You're waiting for it. Uh-huh. Wow. What is it, like toys, clothes? It, it can be whatever, but if they leave it in the yard like they're not supposed to. Okay, this is my question for you, though. Consequences. Does it not blow mm-hmm. all of that out of the mower and yes. then you have to pick it up? Yes. I have to pick it up anyway. <laughs> May as well shred it first to, to send a message. Oh, I love it. Uh-huh. Does it send a message? It sounds like they're still doing it. All the time. All the time. I ran over a stupid dog leash the other day my dog doesn't even have a leash nor need one and it got tangled up in my blade shut off my my lawnmower immediately seized it up oh wow i had to get baby penny out there lifting the little flap up for me so i could get up underneath (laughs) it get it all cut out oh story of my childhood i tell you what Get it out before dad sees. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you and mowers. Wow. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. What a go. what There's a story. That. You could write a whole book about your relationship with mowers. Not really. I mean, that was like a two minute talk, and I'm pretty much done. You just talked for 20 minutes. It was uh-huh. pretty crazy. Yeah, 20. Well, I weeded it in yesterday. It was great. I didn't whack anything down. Good. I, I was about to ask. I don't think. <laughs> No, you, you didn't pull a page out of Tyler's book. I didn't. I did not pull a page out of Tyler's book, though I have before. Tyler has not weed whacked yet, <laughs> <laughs> but it's coming. It is coming. But my my beds, I weeded them, cleaned up around them, planted some stuff. Everything looks so good. Nice for now. And then the weeds all come back. It's always a great feeling on the day off to clean up the stuff. I planted some stuff yesterday. What'd you plant? I planted some little Callies, Cali Bracoa, a little million bell petunias. That's pulled right. my. I had to sacrifice. I took pictures. Actually, we're going to show them this week on the show, but I took pictures of how pretty they still looked. But I had to get them out. I had to get something new growing because the pansy's going to be ugly soon. That's true. So it's a sacrifice we make in gardening. My violas are are looking real leggy that I have in a planter right now. Mm-hmm. I left my house this morning. I was like, oh, I got to get those out because mm-hmm. now they look bad. They were real cute like two days ago, and now they've gotten from cute to ugly. Mm-hmm. That's what the mateys are going to bring out. Mm-hmm. Bringing mm-hmm. out the ugly. <laughs> y'all my my corn salad is, is it, huge mache yeah. i told y'all about mm-hmm. it's like massive i can't believe how big the leaves are on this thing oh they get so big i told you my friend's neighbor had it growing yeah. and it like screened his house it was so big wow i did not know that i mean it wasn't that big but it was probably as tall as me i mean that Screen sounds like house. that sounds like amaranth to me <laughs> it wasn't that's crazy yeah. i just you know, it's still growing. I'm leaving it. But I tell you what, my uh, arugula has bolted. Mm. Mine did, too. I had some reseed, <sighs> and it flowered like a week ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. I would really like it not to do that because <laughs> I like it on my burgers and it's salads. Good. Mine so, did that last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate, but it happens. But, it does happen. but my strawberries are looking good. It's going to be a good fruit year. Nice. Um, my plums. Mm-hmm. They're oh, juicing up. Good. You love yeah. your fruit so much. Mm-hmm. I love I that you love them. It's your thing. Ima- imagine this. You're the this. fruit guy You here. walk down the, your back steps, and you've got blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and plums at your disposal. Mm-hmm. 
and you didn't hardly have to do nothing. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, yeah. the only thing I did was throw a sheet on the plum just to make sure, just on, the, on a few branches just to make sure. And it set fruit so good. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of you. I love how much you love it. Hey, speaking of like fruit and nut stuff, Austin, didn't you win an award once? Mm-hmm. That people don't know about. Really? Is he ready to disclose this, Caroline? You kind of dug it up. Kind of did. Well, I was reminded of that because I said Tyler was the fruit guy, but I was like, but Austin is like the fruit and nut guy. And I kept, I felt Austin's side eye a little bit when uh, I said that. I, I didn't mention Listen, any nuts. we can edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to, I'll take it out. If you're not ready for the world to know this. You know what? I'm fine with it. It's cool. I did it in college. There's this little competition that happens within the horticulture programs of all these different schools. There's like 21 different colleges that came together in California. I can't remember where we were. Now it was a Southern Palm California. Springs. Palm Springs. Exactly. Thank you, Tyler. And I there's remember. a written test. There's a fruit and nut judging section there's an identification section with woody ornamentals and then there's an identification stuff with floriculture so i placed third overall in the whole competition but i got second in fruit and nut judging look at that i can judge fruits and nuts baby yes you can can. oh sure can i'm still really proud of that you know what thanks for bringing that you're welcome i'm proud of you for that i'm proud to be able to work beside you and say that i still can't believe it I mean, that's big. That's like the whole country. People Mm -hmm. going there. I don't know how many people were there, but it's impressive. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you were hired out to like grape orchards. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) There's a word for that. Wineries, vineyards. That's it. Vineyards. Yeah. (laughs) Imagine you go out and you smell grapes Uh, for people. That'd be fun. To judge them. I think you should get into that. What? (laughs) You know what it literally was, though? It was a paper plate with four different fruits and or nuts on the plate so trail mix and not that <laughs> and you went and you judged which one was the worst quality to the best quality and you rate you put them in order that was the test did they go buy That's one from based. like walmart and then another one from like whole foods and yeah another one i from think they somebody's did. crop mm-hmm. yeah Nice. So that was the test, which isn't that funny? Like that's so that's random. amazing. Just so on a random. paper plate. But hey, you got it. There's a plaque with your name on it somewhere. That's true. At MTSU's campus. Nice. It's there still. Mm-hmm. We'll Thank take you. a field trip down there one day. I get a picture of you standing next to it. <laughs> but now everybody knows that. Cool. And I do think it's very cool. That's something. It's it is something. Mm-hmm. Dude from Mississippi State beat me. Oh, Big man. tall guy, real skinny. Wonder what he's doing now. So was it a what <laughs> is it about this podcast? Huh? Listening to this podcast. <laughs> I hope so. Shout out to whoever won that. What year was it? I don't remember. Long okay. ago. Okay. It was a long time ago. 1993, I think. Mississippi State's just really well known to have a great horticulture program. And he got me. He did. So is it, are all the winners like <laughs> Southern fruit and nut sniffers? Is that the thing? <laughs> well, he did, He probably beat me and he beat everyone overall. Like he was just like this like kind of brain whiz kind of dude. So good for him. Whatever. An olfactory <laughs> genius, if mm-hmm. you will. <laughs> uh, I'm just well, imagining sniffing fruit. There's probably lots of other characteristics for that. Uh-huh. You have to feel it, look at it. There's smell a lot it. that goes into it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so cool. yeah, yeah, it is. But you know what? What? <laughs> Austin's good at judging other things on the lot. As Austin well. judges people's carts. You know. <sighs> Don't tell people in a good things. way. No, I didn't mean, I guess judging is a bad word, but when Austin sees a good cart, which is often, he's always complimenting people. Mm-hmm. And then whenever they walk away and they're not looking and I want to judge something, I'll be like, y'all see what they had on that cart? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. people are going to be scared to walk by you. Nah. I like most stuff. It's fine. Yeah, I the first time you came over to my y'all. house, I said, don't judge me. And you were like, I don't judge anybody. And then the next day you were like, Caroline, why do you have all this planted? What was that? Yuck. Uh-huh. <laughs> so... Listen, we all get judged by Austin here and there. It's a, it comes with being it's a, a rite of person. passage. It almost. really is. Y'all, it I really only is. do it to the people I love. That's right. Uh huh. Exactly. Because I do. My coworkers get it the worst too. Yeah, we really do. Uh huh. I'm like, we well, you know that. Put that back. Ugh. But he can't take it when. I when don't we pick turn. bad. I don't pick bad things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> Absolutely, you do. <laughs> I don't pick bad. You Remember like. your ketchup and mustard, Rose? Shut up, Tyler. Oh, that I wasn't forgot. a bad pick. I forgot about Stupid that. Stupid winner took it. It was a bad pick, Tyler. Though. wasn't a bad pick. You ketchup and mustard. It, mustard is a beautiful rose. Ketchup and mustard. Shut up. 
God. <laughs> Listen, we all make mistakes gardening. That wasn't no a mistake. Nobody is perfect, that all right? That was our mother's mistake. I planted four Florida Sunshine Elysium last year, and you know what they look like right now? Trash. And I told you that. You didn't listen to me. I know what's good. I wanted to learn my own lesson, and I'm proud of it. That is true, Austin. Some people you can't tell. That's you right. You can't, can't tell them. You can't tell me. I'm no. going to do it. No. I'm going to go, and I'm going to do it. I did paint that Godzilla um, painted fern. So you we'll painted see how it? it. He said painted it. Painted fern? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I, I you wanted to say it. planted, I think. <laughs> he said painted. It's okay. You painted it Listen, a little and then planted I, it. When I edit this audio, I'll go back and see, and then I'll correct it. Uh-uh. Just kidding. I won't correct it. But I'm sure I was right. But I did plant that, and we'll see if it dies, because after I bought it, you told me it was going to die. I did. I was actually very much joking about that. Japanese painted fern's a good plant. I just One of our other coworkers, Steven. Steve, has had a bad luck with with. Japanese painted ferns. He just can't get one to live. I hadn't even had to worry about mine. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's the thing. But things happen. I was just joking about that one. (laughs) But not the the Elysium. Yuck. Austin, you dissed Wigella. And yeah, and my tuxedo Wigella that I got for free (laughs) is growing so happily. White blooms all the way up and down the branches. It is laying over a little bit. A couple of those little branches are laying over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's beautiful. But it'll be okay. Yeah. I'm okay with Wiggles. It's that old school. I love school. Wiggles. He calls them the Wiggles. The Wiggles. Yeah, the Wiggles. For the Wiggles. Old school, man. Been around forever. Good plant. I've thought about planting some. I don't have any. They just get a little big and rangy, you know? Yeah, I'm okay but with that. Whatever. Mine's about two and a half, three feet right now. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. too bad. Hey, give it a cut back after it blooms and that thing will stay tidy. All That's right. what I want to do. Bloom heavy next spring. Yeah. Let's go That's ahead and cut ourselves back because I feel like we've been talking for a minute, Probably. right? Probably. I'm rambling. <laughs> It might be time to get into this week's broadcast. Let's do it. Let's do it. So you're going to hear Josh Carey, David Bates, as well as the three of us as we dive into questions, which you can send to us on Instagram, Facebook, or gardeninginsideout at gmail.com. But let's go ahead and get into the broadcast from Saturday, April 13th. The one thing that caught my eye during the walk about this morning... Those blood goods on the trellises up front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're they're oh, outstanding. Oh, my. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Folks, I mean, it is just up in the, the dew and the water and the if you've got a big flat wall on, on the <sighs> east side of the house. Mm. Uh, they I saw be... three of them out there, yeah. too, folks. There's so, only yeah. three. Okay. So, yeah. All right. I'm sure that um, there have been some inquiries. People, uh-huh. Have, uh-huh. people have things that they're curious about how to deal with. I bet you have those questions all queued up. We have up. a few, <laughs> and by a few, I mean a lot. So let's go ahead and dive into these questions. Our first question we're going to start with is about the weather. So they are asking, with regard to the conditions here in Nashville over the next month and a half, I am still a bit concerned about nightly temperatures. The AccuWeather forecast out to May 6th and 7th show a few nights with lows in the upper 40s. It's just a few nights, but still with recent to move any production plants that I started from seed. So basically, they have some plants they want to harden off. They're planning on starting the process April 15th and then moving them into raised beds May 1st. They're wondering our thoughts on that. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, I bet you that Austin and I come down pretty close on this. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. at this transitional season, you need to be thinking in terms of two things, not just how cold is it getting overnight, but how warm is it getting where the plants are? So you, you really need to try to run these new starts as cool as possible. Mm. If they're in an area where it's getting up to 85 or 90 degrees because you've got them protected, uh, then you're erring on the other side of the, uh, uh, of the equation because they're going to get spindly and flimsy. So you're, you may actually be at the point where it's going to be to your advantage to go ahead and get those in the ground. The ground just is warming up pretty nice. Now, we've had some mm. cool, we've had a few cool days, but it's it's on the way. So yes. if it's not currently quite as warm, I don't think there's any real concern about things being chilled as a result of soil temperature. And there's nothing in the forecast that would, consi- that would uh, indicate it air temperature wise mm-hmm. so what do you think I, I think that soil temperature right i think that's a good idea is to like actually get them in the ground now like don't keep them above the ground in pots with this warmer weather we're about 85 on monday like my god wow. five degrees less than 90 really so like the soil temperature is still fairly yeah. chilly like david said so getting them in the ground 
will keep that plant nice and like stocky and sturdy. It won't like really push a ton of growth because of the ground temps. But upper 40s, y'all, with even the warmest of warm season stuff is not going to damage any of your plants. Even like watermelon or something that likes it as hot as can be. Right. Like the upper 40s does not injure plants at, at that temperature. Absolutely. So, and, yeah. and in case we weren't clear on that, we are talking about uh, vegetable and gardening plants. You yeah. Know, things that are not annual tropicals. in nature, not. Now, and we're not talking about trees and shrubs, that right. kind of thing. So it's just those little seed starts that you probably have been working on for the last perhaps month or two, depending Six on weeks. when. Yeah, yeah. So there Six you weeks. go. But you know, it, and as accurate as accu weather can be, if you're looking out much more than three days, s- yes, <laughs> three days. It's not going to be very accurate. No, I, I mean, contend that uh, they have a, trends and models. I think and, a ten-day forecast is a three-day forecast, which is pretty reliable, yeah. with statistical data of a week added on to the back right. end. Right. So, mm-hmm. so now, uh, last year I made a mistake with some of the seedlings that I did. I took them out, took them straight to the garden without getting any kind of a transition, and I lost about two thirds of them because they got sunburned. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just burn up. I mean, it was it was disheartening, but I, we lived through. Yeah, and that's that's the hardening off process right. we always talk about. And bring straight from the home or under a grow light into the full sun right. is a very uh, it's a quick you know like thing that they don't necessarily want. We kind of want to slow. It can be a quick death. A very quick death. Yeah, the quicker sunburn, than glyphosate sure. actually. Yeah. So I mean, uh, the sun. Yeah, the sun is intense. Way more intense than your grow lights are. So I mean, mm-hmm. getting them up underneath the porch to where like the you know sunlight is there and it's present, but it's not directly onto those tiny right. little seedlings. So yeah, then general rule of thumb: the smaller the seedling, the more kind of hardening off it needs. But it okay. happens fairly quickly. Yep. You know, within a week, really, if you get them out and start getting them, you know, into that, and then you can move them out into the full sun whenever they kind of. You can almost just kind of tell you know you can kind of look at it and be like okay be you're, you're sturdy We're enough, ready yeah. you're stocky enough to get on mm-hmm. out there and, and and taste that sun so and if by chance you have seedlings that have gotten a little spindly on you then it's a good idea to transplant them into a slightly larger container but plant them deep so that you support that stem okay. so that it doesn't flop on you too bad so yep. anyway we better move along yeah, we better. we've got yeah. we put a lot of uh, time into that one but uh-huh. but it is a timely question it is very good All right. We've only got one question about this today, but I feel like there will be more. I've heard that cicadas can be harmful to young dogwood trees and they should be wrapped to keep them protected. What is your take on this? Mm, Any other trees that may need to be wrapped? I have two small Tokyo tower fringe trees. Yeah. Christmas Mm. paper. Wrap them. (laughs) Okay. There you go. Got to put a bow on up like Christmas. Yeah. -hmm. Yeah, No, I, I really don't think there's anything to really get, worry about with cicadas. I had this question yesterday with young trees. I mean, mm-hmm. they do put they do put a little hole in like the bark of the stem, but it's not like a, a boring insect or something to where it's like tunneling into the vascular system of the plant. It's just literally a little hole they put in so they can so they can molt off of that. And it's like I'd, I've never I've lived here my whole life. We've had cicadas. I don't I've never heard of any plant related injury. From cicadas. I yeah, the only, the only injury happens there. And what is going on with the cicada? Number one, mm. they do not feed. So mm-hmm. you're not going to, they don't chew up foliage. They don't, what, no. what they mate and then they lay eggs. And they have a little thing called an ovipositor. Excuse it's a little me? thing. An ovipositor. Ovipositor that okay. is like a hypodermic needle that they can push underneath the cambium layer of small branches and limbs and they'll lay eggs through that. Little bitty eggs. Little bitty eggs underneath mm-hmm. there. And as those eggs grow, you'll see it. the stem begin to swell. And as it begins to swell, this is the only opportunity where damage can occur. If it's a very small stem, it is possible for that stem to get weak and flag off. But it will not kill the tree. The tree. It yeah. may, you might possibly lose a branch here or mm-hmm. there. But you know these things have been going on for eons. You know this yeah. is this eons. is the this is the year uh, where it doesn't really affect us because the line for where the two broods uh, intersect or come close to butt up against each other is in central Illinois. So we don't get that more northern Neener, brood. Neener. The what we're going to get the same one we always get. What we don't know is how much or how intense or how severe it is. Right. We we've had one. We've had years in the past that were incredibly intense, 
and others that were barely noticeable. And well, we don't they, know until they emerge which way this will You know, it's weird is you got the Brood 13 and the Brood 17. Right. The Brood 17 comes out every 13 years. The Brood 13 comes out every 17 years. Yeah, they, they, they kind of they they got their numerology what's, what's up with that? They, you know? mm-hmm. yeah, it's a little strange. And there are many other broods outside yes. of that also. At least 17. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we've got at least 17 more questions, okay. so right. let's, let's do, do it. it. Up, Josh. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not what I said. <laughs> How can bad. I get rid of pink primrose from my garden bed, which has taken over the entire area? Mm. Good luck. This yeah. is one thing that I have not planted. So Yes, I'm surprised, actually. I, I am, too. I've got the like upright evening primrose, um, and that is a little bit invasive, but it's not as bad as like the pink primrose, which looks like a ground cover. Yeah. Though that, it is really, really pretty. It's gorgeous. Don't get yeah. me wrong, but... But it is noxious. It it can it is bad. Like you and once you have it, you almost can't get rid of it. I don't it spreads think like you fire. Can. Like it's crazy. It covers the ground. And like if that's what you want and you have this area that's just like awful and it's annoying to you and you haven't been able to like get grass to grow or like whatever's have it's rocky. Like you could plant that, I guess, and it'd be fine. But it really takes over and getting rid of it is very hard to do. Yeah, so. I feel like it just keeps reseeding itself. I do see hillsides covered in it and it's, I mean, it is gorgeous. It, it is really pretty. I'll give you that. But yeah, I mean, I guess the first step, like she just said, is is that if it goes to seed, like you got to cut off the flowers so it doesn't go to seed. Okay. Like that's probably your first step. And then just you physically dig it up. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know. And dig it up. And, and dig it up. Dig it up Digging. more. It keeps popping up. Just like I'm doing with my passion flower, four o'clocks, and mint that I have planted oh, near mint. a garden. The, okay, Woo! the mint was very stupid of me. <laughs> but I did plant it in a pot, and it rooted out under, and... It's I all over. That remark. Yeah, it took me three years to get rid of. I'll it. never be rid of it. I mean, yeah. I've dug out this garden bed twice. I thought I got all the mint, and it just keeps coming back. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mojitos. We have an, mojitos. Just we we have an area <laughs> that's our sold order area that mm-hmm. was heavily infested in mint. We dug all that out, put down weed barrier fabric, uh, we heavy gravel, mm-hmm. and I have. And I've continued to put down non-selective herbicide, uh, and it still keeps coming yeah. back. <laughs> it, it never it, dies. It is very, very determined. Uh-huh. It never yeah. dies. Well, yep, speaking of much. mint and stuff, let's switch mm-hmm. to a question that kind of refers to that or can. Mm-hmm. I want to grow my own tea. Do you carry tea plant, and will it do well in Nashville? Hey. So we're not talking about mint, but that is an option. You but, know what they're talking about? You know where tea comes from? Chameleon. All tea. It's a chameleon. chameleon. Isn't that great? Camellia sinensis. And mm-hmm. yes, we do stock it. We actually have some currently at the nursery right now. Um, it is a camellia, and it is a it's a pretty hardy camellia actually. So camellias can be a little eh here, you know. For the most part, they're fine. But we've had a couple winters the past couple years that a lot of camellias have been injured. Uh, but sinensis seems to be a little bit more hardy. And yes, we stock it. It'll live here. Get it in a spot that's not like stupid cold or like extra windy over the winter time you know and like some good morning to early afternoon sun with a break from the afternoon sun around here and it's going to do well you know i put mine in a bad spot you know why why got mowed down (laughs) a couple times and then it never came back that's just a a big theme for me and my beds Uh, there are all kinds of there are all kinds of plants that you can grow herbal teas from right Uh, which is why you can do that pepper i mean there's so many different things i grow that i use for teas yeah, so like it a lot doesn't of just herbs. have to be that. Bergamot, mm-hmm. right? Bergamot yep. is an additive to some of these. That's what's in Earl Grey. Lemongrass. Mm-hmm. Yes. All sorts of herbs that yeah. are infused with tea, but Actually, the main ingredient is, is camellia. That's yeah. the tea. Camellia sinensis. Mm-hmm. Wow. We can do it with that. Let's get another question in, y'all. Best plants to plant around a culvert and underground electrical wire, wire to help with erosion, preferably native. <sighs> Ooh, switchgrass. <laughs> I always go switchgrass when it comes to native yeah. for erosion control. Like, yeah, I mean, that is a good one. Or little blue stem or big blue stem. Uh-huh. I mean, that's a great native grass that will do the same thing. Yeah, there's a number of grasses that'll do well here in that, and uh, they're just really, really good for erosion control because their roots are in- insane, like extensive, insane. Uh, they just hold on to the earth. I just mean, that, try that's digging what I'm going one up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Ask Ben Trest, who works here, one of our landscape specialists. <laughs> he just had to dig up a bunch of switchgrass. So much switchgrass. The next I got day some. he came in and he was like dead yeah. <laughs> from digging up all he that switchgrass. He said it was so heavy. There's actually a really cool uh, sage who works here at the nursery and is amazing and does an awesome job with inventory. Um, had this on her desk and then I've seen it online, but it's all of the native grasses and it shows their roots and how deep they go. Oh, yeah. And it's a really, really cool image to look at. I'll see if I can find it and share it um mm-hmm. 
But Sharpen it's so your interesting. shovel yes. before yeah. you start digging. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And keep a file ready to resharpen as needed. Gardening Inside Out is brought to you by Earth Mix, featuring Garden Premium Topsoil Blend. This essential mix includes Tennessee subsoil, supernatural organic compost, humic acid, and mycorrhizal fungi to create a truly living soil. Garden topsoil is perfect for establishing raised, edible, and ornamental garden beds, as well as for planting trees, shrubs, and other landscape plants. Bulk and super sack options available. Visit earthmix.net to discover their entire line of soils and amendments and helpful blog posts. Success begins at the ground level when you use Earthmix garden products. Are you talking about what's in bloom with Austin? Hey. 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 It's time. Hey. Y'all, there's a lot of stuff blooming. He it's walked in here with a stack of paper. <laughs> Actually, it was just one paper. Yeah, but just one paper. Stack. It's full of stuff. <laughs> there is. I had to do it last night. I was sitting down thinking about what's blooming. All right, so here we go. Let's talk about the Dude, ground covers first. Night. Look, the creeping flox is still going. The candy mm-hmm. tuff still going. The vinca still going. And I talked to Caroline this morning. I asked her about her dianthus. Dianthus is blooming. That's always wow. pretty. You have Mine a pink one, right? Mine is gorgeous. I've got fire witch, and it is... I want to plant more. Mm-hmm. Dianthus, really good mm-hmm. plant. Let's go to the perennials that are blooming. Your irises, the state flowers, still going. Columbine, going great. Woodland flocks, the little blue. We got so mm. many right now. They're really pretty. You ought to grow that one for the shade. Yep. Bleeding heart, you've got to grow, y'all. Trust me, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, cat mint, Caroline, you told me this morning your yep. cat mint's blooming. It, it seems, seems early, early, but mine but, is hey, blooming. It's poking, looking good. And then, honestly, probably one of my favorites, Baptisia. God. If you're not growing Baptisia, you're seriously missing out. We've got a great selection right now, y'all. Okay, moving to the vines. Hey, cross vine blooming. Carolina Jessamine still going. That pretty little yellow that smells good. Mm -hmm. Hey, I noticed Clematis on my way in this morning. Everybody knows how much I love Clematis, especially this one. Mm -hmm. And, Josh, for you, your wisteria is in bloom, sir. Yes, it is. And it smells fantastic. (laughs) It is wonderful. It is dangling from the trees out in the woods. I've seen it. Wisteria Mm -hmm. have a sturdy Sturdy thing if you want to grow wisteria, okay? Yep. Okay, moving on to the shrubs and trees. This was interesting to me this morning. Calicanthus, the sweet shrub. Mm-hmm. That is in bloom. That is a growing machine, by the mm. way. That is a champ. Uh, little red blooms. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. Calicanthus, it's a large, fast-growing plant. Looks kind of tropical, even. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all, it's it's viburnum season. It is vi- the double-file viburnums. The, macrocep- the s- Chinese snowball, the eastern snowball, the... One that smells good. What's that one? Uh, uh, Burkwood. Yes, the Burkwood types. <laughs> those are blooming, and they smell fantastic. Some of the biggest bloomers you're going to see, those, I mean, Chinese snowball. The blooms are this big, y'all. They're adorned over the, the whole plant. The size of your head. Humongous, beautiful. I've got one in the yard. I love it. It's fantastic. My daughters were picking flowers love from it last night. Wow. All viburnum should be worth a grow for the shade or the sun. Like, they can live yes. anywhere. They're great. Good plant. Dogwood, still beautiful. Of course, everybody loves dogwoods. If you live in Middle Tennessee or really lots of places, the dogwoods pink, are beautiful. Yeah, the pink yeah. ones and red ones oh, this year are you just mm-hmm. can't. You just can't beat it. Red buds are still going, but they're actually starting to leaf out a little bit. So they got this yeah. two-tone. They look really cool right now. The leaves that come out with the blooms behind them, like, it's kind of cool. It really looks nice. Uh, hey, azaleas and rhododendrons, y'all. What's better? Nothing. What's mm-hmm. better? Nothing is better. When they're in full Petunias. show, nothing better even i mean in full show there it might even be better than tunia's really i'm, I'm gonna say oh. it. Uh-oh. Said it so Whoa. we just recorded Uh-oh. him Stop saying it. that right so uh, that's gonna be a sound i said clip it in full bloom in full I'm bloom they're better say. than tunia's not throughout the whole season okay making a new sound clip. okay here we go <laughs> Quans and cherries still going but they're just about out that's kind of a quick bloomer but they yep. still look nice mm-hmm. uh from last week i talked about the black cherries our natives still blooming Paulonia tomentosa, those purple ones you're seeing in the woods, that invasive tree that grows like a weed, mm. still going. And, and dropping and flowers all over the neighborhood yes, in they the Smyrna. Do. And then they'll Uh-oh. proceed and you'll see them pop up everywhere. Hey, one of the nasty ones that's going right now, that bush honeysuckle, that nasty invasive weed oh, yeah. is really blooming right now. So sorry, but that's happening. And then also uh, something I thought was interesting, the deciduous magnolias and the bridal respirea. This is like a, a number two bloom for them. Because wow. some people cut back their bridal respirea, and they see that they bloom about two weeks later than if you didn't cut them back. So those are blooming. And the deciduous magnolias, yeah, they got whacked by a freeze, but they're throwing some secondary blooms, and they're mine still is, looking pretty. But mine are much smaller, uh-huh. and they're less uh, colorful. Less vibrant. Yeah, yeah I've it's noticed that very as well. interesting. It is interesting. Mm-hmm. So that's what's in bloom. And, hey, Tyler, throw up that picture if you don't mind. Yeah. 
Drum roll. Hey, oh. shout out to my dad and my stepmom out in East Texas. This wow. is not here. This is in East Texas, but I had to give my talk to him the other day. Drips? Unfortunately, my dad lost his dog of 15 years. Oh, no. Very, very sad to hear that, daddy. But you got some pine. I what we planted those pine trees. I didn't. He did. But they're out there getting big. But look <laughs> at those roses. The coral drift. Oh, and he lives about drift. an about an hour away from Tyler, Texas, which is you probably know Tyler, Rose Texas has Kingdom. the Rose Kingdom. And I was so mad at my dad. I'm, I mean, I'm happy for him. Uh -huh. I'm happy for you, Daddy. I hope you're listening. But I'm mad at you because. Roses grow so much better in East Texas than they do here. He was like, yeah, I mean, besides, you know, I fertilize them once in the spring, and I'll cut back a wild hair here and there. But for the most part, that's all I do. And I'm like, ugh. That is You're not mad so jealous. As Austin jealous. says, clean and green. They are clean and green and blooming really on are. every stem. Oh. Not that one yet, Tyler. Oh, sorry. Uh -uh. <laughs> Keep it with the roses. Daddy, you're doing a good job. Gail, good to talk to you all the other night, growing the beautiful roses in East Texas. Good work. Enjoy that back patio in that lake. Uh -huh. And that lake? Look, they're right on that. Do you not lake. see the water there? There's a man made lake. Oh, lakes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't have my it. glasses on. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Outed. But so are we going to all go visit your dad, go swim at the lake, and oh, broadcast live from there? Look at the roses. We do it. Yeah, well, I guess we could. A couple Saturdays from now. Get ready for a road trip. <laughs> all right, here we yeah. go. We'll okay. take it, your van. How's this <laughs> bandwidth down there? Yeah. That's, that's the, that's it's the probably place. pretty good. He's uh, he's itching for stuff to do. He just recently retired, and he's like ready to do stuff. So he's uh, it was just good to talk to you the other night, Dad. And uh, yeah, keep growing them roses. All right, Geo Road Trip. Hey, we got okay. a question about roses, so let's go ahead and get into that. Planted knockout roses two weeks ago, and they now look like they're dying. <laughs> Any idea of what this could be? If it happens quickly, it's usually always a water issue, and it's usually always not enough. Now, that's quick, y'all. I mean, we shouldn't be... What kind were they? Knockouts, knockouts which knockouts. are the easiest roses to grow. Um, now, could it be that, like, sawfly larva that I've got? All of a sudden, my carefree wonder, I mean, if I didn't know that, that it wasn't dying, all of my leaves look white or a little bit brown. And, I mean, to somebody who doesn't know much about roses, it could look like it's dying. Yeah, probably going to have to have some better photographs or yes. some photographs yeah. Yeah, with some close-ups to give us an idea because there's a lot of speculative and the treatment... Uh, or how to deal with it would be very different depending on what it is. Exactly, so. yes. Yeah. Send us some pictures. But Caroline's got a good point. The sawfly larvae, which is the little, what we just commonly call rose slugs, are on the back yep. sides of the leaves. Those just hit. I had a yeah. customer yesterday just showed me pictures. You told me yesterday you noticed it. It was like overnight, too. There it, was, the leaves were clean, and then all of a sudden, every single leaf except now the new growth. They just, got nothing else going on. That's yeah. what they yeah. do. Yeah. They, That's what they do. Out. Yeah, like they'll lay 50 eggs on a rose, and they'll all hatch pretty much simultaneously. Mm. And then they immediately start eating on your rose. So you'll right. start to see these brown, like Caroline's talking about, and then that'll wear through to a hole, um, and even irregular holes. Like, it's not, you know, perfect. So the sawfly larvae is here, y'all. Get ready. There's like three generations per season every year here in Middle Tennessee. So not you really ready. need to knock them down right now. Early, yes. Yeah, you got to get on it. I had a, I talked to the Rose Society whenever I did a speech out there, and I talked to them. They're literally spraying at least once a month when it comes to – and they're using Captain Jacks, which is spinosad, is a is – a, uh, the chemical that's used, and that's what they use to combat the rose slugs because they're here every year. Captain Jacks. It's, that's the brand name, yeah. It's an insecticide. The, yeah. It's an insecticide, yes. Okay. And the, the the active is spinosad, which is good for for worm control, typically. You know, yep. caterpillars yeah. and larvae. And it's not extremely. Um, you know, it doesn't kill on both ends. Yeah, you know, it's it only not, kills the target. It's it's pretty uh, um, environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, that's, that's happening. Thing. Cool. Yeah. I was bummed when I saw that on my Carefree Wonder because it's one of my favorite plants. It's yeah. A so. gorgeous rose that does pretty well here. Mm -hmm. We got a boxwood question. Ow. Uh -oh. oh, are you excited? Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> With the heavy rain this week, my younger boxwoods are flopping to the ground. Should I prune them? Can I do this now? Should I wait? And then they said, P.S. I love the show and have learned so much from y'all. Well, thank you for that. I want to learn more from you, though. Younger, but flopping to the ground? I mean, could it be the new growth and now it's like turned it's down, turned I guess? Down? It yeah. could be. Yeah, we haven't really had any rains of that magnitude. I mean, we were <laughs> supposed to have them, but it didn't really materialize. We did maybe get an inch, but we didn't get like three inches. Was All which what they were talking yeah. about, which were in a deluge fashion. We did not get that. So yeah, I, I think that probably by the time you reach uh, late morning, midday today, they should be dried off and standing up. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I, you know, I've noticed boxwood with like really tender new growth get rained on heavily and then kind of lay 
down a little bit. But, like, that growth is going to harden up over the next week or two. That's going to get a lot more firm. And that should, like David just said, it should stand back up and – Get I don't the it, ground that seems dramatic. That yeah. does seem dramatic. Yeah. But like I want to see. Like, hey, you know, I sent a picture of, of this one too. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. descriptions are dramatic. Exactly. They perhaps, are. perhaps over <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> like this. Hey, one. stop it. Mm-hmm. Gardening Inside Out is brought to you by Bates Nursery and Garden Center. Spring is at our doorstep, and if your plans involve improving your landscape or starting a garden, then Bates Nursery is the essential place for what you need. They offer the largest selection of plants in the southeast, from unique flowers and trees to tropicals, roses, house plants, and native plants. Bates Nursery's 92 years of serving Nashville gives them unparalleled experience in stocking the plants that perform best for your home. Their friendly staff of horticulture experts are ready to assist you with your gardening needs. Located minutes from downtown Nashville in beautiful Whites Creek, Tennessee, just off Briley Parkway at exit 19. Shop inventory online before you visit at BatesNursery.com. Bates Nursery and Garden Center, beautifying Nashville since 1932. Well, hey, let's go ahead and get to some more questions because we, we did get some live you questions see in. Out there? Yeah. I did. Okay. Colin says, I got staghorn ferns about a month, month or so ago, mounted on driftwood on the wall in same light level. Two are doing great, but one of one's leaves are thin while the others have thick, deep green leaves. Help. Mm-hmm. So with these all being in the exact same spot, like you said, with the same lighting, it makes me think that it probably has something to do with the root system. So when they were mounted, the roots might have been disturbed a little too much on that single one. I would say just go ahead and fertilize it, water it a lot, um, and it should turn that dark green again and be be happy. You can also put some fertilizer in a spray bottle, dilute it a lot, mm-hmm. and then you can spray like the base of that staghorn fern and that'll really help it out as well. Mm-hmm. I agree. Hey, Call. Hey, Call. Hey, Call. Hey, I hey, saw we- you the other day. You bought annuals. Oh. Yes, I know. I talked to Colin he for does a it while. Every year. He does. Yeah. I, I, let me he quickly does. interject this before I forget. Uh-oh. I meant to do it earlier. Um, Bates Nursery, in conjunction with the Chestnut Group, are uh, doing a um, support thing for Greenways for Nashville. Oh. And if you want to find it, this is a. Uh, we actually are just a sponsor. The Chestnut Group is the one who pr- provides all of the artwork, and it is incredible. Highly encourage. I've been to it for the last number of years. Uh, there's some stunning artists in Middle Tennessee. To find out all about it, go to Greenways for Nashville. That's F O R. Greenways for Nashville.org. Go to the events tab and then click mm-hmm. on the painting the Greenways. And when you go there, it takes you to this page and you can find out all about it. So check it out. Painting the Greenways. Uh, Sponsored by uh, mm-hmm. Bates Nursery and Garden Center and presented by the Chestnut Group for Greenways for Nashville. Yep, that plein air style mm. is so cool, too. You need to go up to see them in person, folks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go get there. That that seems like it'll be a great event. Mm-hmm. All right, transplanted my snake plant, but now I need to stake it up. Any suggestions? Pack that soil down. Um, <laughs> Austin and I do a lot of repotting here at the nursery, and people always have a lot of questions. And, you know, I've been repotting plants for so long, I don't think about how... You know, it's kind of second nature. You just do it. I just do it. So I would say with you repotting it, you disturb the roots a little bit, and now the soil up top probably just isn't tight enough. So get your hands in there. Just pack the soil down around the side of the pot. Make sure it's not in a pot that's too big because snake plants do like to be root-bound. They like to stay tight, and they can rot really, really easily. You can also get a lot of a little bit of rocks. I like the Enlighten, the Expanded Shell from Earth Mix. I use that a lot to just pack around the top of the plant and help hold it up. But I really think your problem is just packing that soil a little bit tighter. Well, pretty much with every repot we do, we finish with rock because a lot of repots can be a little wiggly after you're done repotting them. That's just kind of part of it. So using the expanded shell or enlightened that we have, we put that around the stems of the plant and it really helps that wiggle process. Tightens it up a lot. Tightens it up, yeah. And it looks really good. It looks so good. That expanded shell is like one of my favorite products that we have here. I I don't know why. Like a top dressing or you actually put it around the top? Top dressing. dressing. Literally finish with it's it. It's like then, a container mulch. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I use it for a lot of stuff. That can be used to incorporate in the soil. Yes, you know? definitely. Mm. Mm-hmm. But as Aww. a finished top dressing, it it's, looks it's great. beautiful. Yeah, mm-hmm. it gives cool. a kind of a desert look. Mm-hmm. Okay, so good plant or ground cover for shade or part sun, top of retaining wall that does not hurt the wall. 
Okay. So shade to part sun. Blocks. Not going to hurt the wall. Creeping flox would be fine for that. Um, Vinca minor would be fine for that. A little aggressive, but it, it's it'll so do it. aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, creeping Jenny. Creeping Jenny again, really another good. aggressive one. Mm -hmm. If you want it to just cover. Yeah, I wouldn't call it invasive, but I would say it's somewhat it's aggressive. It's aggressive. It's easy to just pull it up to and be keep managed. contained. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's easily mm -hmm. manageable. I've yes. got some of it. I love hate it. It grows around a lot of things, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, what is a good bush that will hide my neighbors that also gives a pretty bloom? Not yep. a boxwood. Not a boxwood. Mm. Not for this scenario. You know what? Like I talked about it, let's go Viburnum here. Let's go by Burnham. Even if it's deciduous, it yes. still does a great job because they stay in the house in the winter. Yeah. Smoke trees. Yeah. Smoke smoke trees. Trees. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a number of the Viburnums, they're in full show right now. Y'all look around town, the double file Viburnums, the, the Chinese snowball, they're great. They get mm -hmm. big, they block out stuff, and they're so stimmy. Like, they're they're, so like yeah. David said, they still have coverage mm -hmm. whenever it's dormant, but they're great. Okay. There's a little uh, book from Josh to. We're Austin. gonna have homework for next week because I want to review on that one. Oh. Container Gardener's work. Handbook. It's <laughs> the farm, okay. made by the Farmers Almanac. I knew it excited you. You've I got homework. Okay. Oh man. Old Farmers Almanac. So. I love that. Okay. Hey, there's some petunias in pots. There's some. Hey, speaking My of. My God. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Caroline. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so we did get questions about pots. So speaking of mm -hmm. this container book, what can be planted in pots on a patio that will survive all season? Lantana would yeah. be mine. But it's bulletproof. Yeah. I'll see it. Like, I guess all growing season. I think all growing about. season. Yeah. Well, and tons of annuals. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're good yes. about your watering practices, right. I mean, for the most part, you can keep color going in a but pot. But if you're not yeah. good, lantana's <laughs> Lantana. a great Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it, it, it doesn't get too hot. Uh -huh. And if it gets dry, it doesn't really care. Yeah, you just it's water it, fine. it'll come right back up. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is people are on the opposite spectrum of that. So if you're too good at watering, don't grow lantana. All right. Because it. It, it doesn't want all that much water. So. Just figuring out those watering practices, that's always crucial. I yep. love Lantana. I'm going to grow it every year and talk about it. And don't grow it with other things that are no. more water yeah. needy. Exactly. Because exactly. you know, you'll, you'll wind up underwatering one or overwatering mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. other. So just you know, select your plants. It's mm -hmm. good to be grown by, by itself because it just takes over so much. I planted a Lantana, and then I planted a lavender, which the lavender did great, mm -hmm. but the Lantana grew into it. Killed off half of that lavender. Didn't do anything to the lantana. It did great. Mm -hmm. um, our next question, I've got this same issue, and mm -hmm. I'm really worried about uh -oh. it. Planted Japanese maple last spring, but it mm -hmm. still has no leaves. Mm -hmm. Is it dead? My macawa, it's in a pot. It's got buds. It's still green. The stems look fine, but it is not leafing out whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. I really don't know how to answer this either, unless it is just dead. Because pretty much every maple is leafed out. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, yep. all Japanese maples I've noticed have really leafed out already. The all three or four that I've got are out. out. Yeah, yeah. Was this that. in the ground or is it in, in a container? In the ground. It Theirs is in the, in the ground. ground. Mine's in a container. Theirs is in ground. Oh, I'm sorry, but if it still sounds has like no a woo. Leaves, it sounds stop. like a woo. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, it yes. happens. It happens. It's still too early. I'm so sad if yes. that's the case. I'm never buying another Jap. That's not true. No. That's not true at all. Not true. Hey, y'all, help. Oh, my oh. Hollywood junipers have yellow brown patches and are losing needles. Uh oh, OK. I want to mm. see how the rest of the plant looks, though, because Hollywood does shed from the interior like most all evergreens do. Um, and uh, Hollywood juniper specifically, the chinensis species, they took a hit last year in the freeze. And I bet they didn't like this year's really zero degree temperatures either. So it could just be residual damage from that. Uh, but I want to see pictures to see how yeah. the rest of the plant looks, not just some of it. Yeah, get you a pair of good gloves, either leather gloves, and just put your hands up into it and dislodge all of that browning foliage. Mm -hmm. I mean, shake it, I mean, from bottom up to the top, and whatever doesn't yep. shake out, then you can take hand pruners and carefully remove the other dead spots, okay. and then fertilize it. Yep. And you might want to go ahead and you know trim it up, shape it a little bit uh, before it starts to really flush. That'll get it back on the path. But uh, yes, it's uh, Juniperus chinensis. While it is quite winter hardy, we've we've had a couple of uh, years Burn. that have tested it. Yeah, and they didn't we like don't it. normally have issues with conifers at all, and uh, all of the camasiparus uh, were you know, negatively affected last year. Camasiparus, so sad. Camasiparus, that's a good so. word. Camasiparus. There you like go. So, huh? Music means what's that music mean? I, <laughs> How did it go so fast so every fast. Saturday morning? Hey, folks. But uh, I think we'll it's come. a conspiracy, Josh. It could mm -hmm. be. The time warp.
It works, works against it's us. It's just a jump to the left and then a step to the right? Yeah, I think that's a different, but oh, yes. Okay. But uh, every Saturday morning, Gardening Inside Out is going to come to you here from Bates Nursery and Garden Center, the Green Room Studios. You're going to see features every week with new stuff inside the studio, yep. and you're going to find out what's growing in and around and blooming in Middle Tennessee. Hey, if you've got those pictures, send them to us. We'd love to get those up, and we'll see those issues in particular. It really helps us out. Like us, share us, tell us ever, tell all your friends, all the neighbors, shake the dog, so yeah. you can we can continue to do this for you. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you right here next Saturday morning from the Green Room Studio. Thank you for tuning into the Gardening Inside Out podcast. If you're looking for more information or more from your hosts, don't forget that we have a live Saturday morning broadcast, 8 a.m. Central Time on YouTube and Facebook. You can also follow us on our Instagram channel. That's at symbol gardening inside out for more posts, reels, and in-depth dives to topics and things we've discussed on the show. If our content resonates with you, consider giving us a follow, like, and subscription on all of our social media pages. See you next time.